Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, freesite, dwyervip.com, freesite. It's April the 16th, 2018. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, Golovkin right now is in a tight spot. He's trying to come up with a commercially lucrative fight. Um, for the Cinco de Mayo weekend, uh, but he's being pushed and pressured by the mandatory contender uh, for his IBF crown, Sergei Deryevchenko, right, who is managed by the same group that manages Danny Jacobs. In fact, Deryevchenko's uh, sparring has actually included Danny Jacobs, in my favorites folder here on YouTube. I actually have a tape of Danny Jacobs sparring his stablemate, Sergei Darianchenko. Let me just say, um, Jacobs is a big believer that his stablemate is major competition for Golovkin. Now, ESPN has actually stepped into the mix. There's been a suggestion that ESPN actually get involved in televising Golovkin's next fight, right? If Golovkin fights Darianchenko, who's unbeaten, who's in his 30s, who's a knockout puncher, greater than 80% KO ratio, right? Who is hunting down Danny Jacobs in the sparring film I found. Looks more comfortable deep in the pocket than, let's say, Golovkin looks. I believe for gamblers, the clear play here, the value play, without knowing the odds, assuming that Golovkin is going to be the prohibitive favorite because the public knows him better, then it does the number one contender. The clear play is to take Deryevchenko to win the fight. You should get greater than four to one odds. Hedged with Golovkin by stoppage. Understand, Golovkin just fought two guys. These are the only two guys in recent memory to go the distance with Golovkin, right? Going back several years. Danny Jacobs and Saul Alvarez, right? Golovkin's just fought two guys who used their back foot extensively against him, right? Jacobs gets dropped. Jacobs leaves the pocket. Jacobs is moving around the ring. He's using the ring. Canelo is going from rope to rope after the early rounds. These are guys staying away from Golovkin. These are guys surviving against Golovkin. Now that's not Deryevchenko's fight style. His style is to come in, use short punches, control the pocket. Right? To me, that kind of fight style, someone's getting stopped. Let me also say too, that if you go back to the Kasim Uma tape, you're going to see a guy up on Golovkin's chest giving Golovkin problems. Golovkin is a guy who likes to extend his arms. He does have a very improved jab right now. But I'm guessing since Darianchenko is training with the guy who gave Golovkin his toughest fight in the last three years, since Danny Jacobs has the same manager, since they use many of the same corner people together, right? Jacobs and Darianchenko, forgive me if I'm butchering the name, then I believe Darianchenko is going to know what to expect from Golovkin. In other words, this isn't going to be a guy in against Golovkin surprised by his jab, right? His stable mate just fought Golovkin. Rather, this is going to be a guy entering the ring with a strategy for dealing with the jab. So I think that fight, Golovkin against his number one contender, his IBF mandatory, 
is going to be much better than the public realizes. And whenever that happens, whenever the public thinks one way and the reality is a different way, you should be able to get great odds in the betting line. Right? Understand, it's a swing for the fences. You're saying, hey, if this underdog is going off at 4-1 to one or higher, I want a taste of that. But you're going to be hedged somewhat because other than Danny Jacobs on his back foot and Canelo on his back foot, and keep in mind, Jacobs and Canelo both are punchers. And they both decided to be on their back foot for long stretches against Golovkin. Other than those guys, no one has gone the distance against Golovkin going back at least three years. Right? You remember how long Kel Brook lasted against Golovkin? What about Daniel Gill? What about Ishida? Right? These guys did not last folks. A guy like Darianchenko who is going to try to own the pocket is either going to have success or he's not. If he doesn't have success, he's not going to go the distance. How long did Martin Murray last against Golovkin? Right? Let's also talk about another champion who you need to keep track of at Middleweight. Understand, the guy who won the Olympic gold medal at the 2012 Olympics, Ryota Murata, just defended his title. He's actually the WBA middleweight champion. Right? Think about it. Now, he has one loss against Hassan Endam. We can debate that loss. Right? Endam was a guy who operates behind a jab, a lot of movement. Right? Murata beats him in the rematch. Murata has an excellent short right hand. I've put his latest KO in my favorites folder here online. Just fast forward to the KO. It's very well done. Murata is hitting him with straight right hands. Right? So then, of course, his opponent is guarded against the straight right that's coming in at this angle. So Murata decides for the first time in a while in the fight to throw a right hook that gets behind the guard. And Murata hits so hard that that's the end of the fight. Now understand, Murata, like Daryavchenko, is in his 30s. Right? Understand all of these guys. Golovkin, he's in his 30s. Right? These guys are trying to make a statement right now. Understand there are other people at middleweight. Jamal Charlo. Right? The knockout Charlo brother. Right? I know Jamal has gotten stoppages. I don't mean to diss Jamel at all. Jamel's more of a stylist, right? Jamal Charlo is the power punching Charlo brother. He's now at middleweight. Folks, middleweight is deeper than you realize. Demetrius Andre is now at middleweight, right? As we look at the middleweight division, don't forget it's WBA champion Ryota Morata. Now, let me also take a chance here to take a moment to say thank you to Vladimir Klitschko. I think Klitschko has just helped out every gambler who questions the status quo right now at heavyweight. If you haven't heard, Vladimir Klitschko, who fought Tyson Fury, lost to him to the point where there are moments in that fight where Fury puts both of his hands behind his back and Vladimir Klitschko doesn't know what to do. Right? And Klitschko lost to Anthony Joshua. Right? I believe Klitschko was down in that fight three times. Has his moments, gets Joshua down, but can't close the show. Ends up getting stopped late. 
right? Klitschko has opined, given his opinion, that Anthony Joshua beats Tyson Fury, that Tyson Fury really isn't a serious challenge to Anthony Joshua because of Tyson Fury's lack of discipline, right? And truth be told, Tyson Fury is a Roberto Duran type fighter. He blooms up between fights, right? He's a Ricky Hatton, right? Some guys, Evander Holofield, etc. Anthony Joshua are always in shape. You look at the guy, you don't know if he's having a fight tomorrow or two months from now, right? With Tyson Fury, you know, right? Because he balloons up. Same thing with Roberto Duran. There's a long list of fighters like this, right? But let's be clear here, folks. And I know YouTube disagrees with me, and that's why I'm just laying the opinion out there, right? When we all agree, it's not as interesting as when we disagree, and this is a huge disagreement I have right now with what's going on at heavyweight. Understand there's something called a ceiling. Right? When a guy is on his A game, when a guy is feeling right and has it going on and brings all the tools in his toolbox to the fight, when he's his best self, how good is he? Right now, what I want people to understand is I know Tyson Fury balloons up in weight. I know it. I know it. Right? But if you're a gambler, you have to ask yourself, if the stakes are big enough, if it's something like a World Heavyweight Championship at stake, if Tyson Fury shows up like he did against Vladimir Klitschko, folks, we don't have to speculate on Fury's A game. We've seen it. Right? In a big fight against a puncher. Right? If... Tyson Fury shows up with his A game on a level playing field, not with some nonsensical referee who's going to take away parts of the game, not allow the fighters to fight, but with a real referee and real scoring, right? Not judges showing up and just rubber stamping a champ in the early rounds, but judges who are actually looking at what happens in the brain. Right? In my opinion, Tyson Fury is one of the two top ceiling guys at heavyweight. Right? Understand, Anthony Joshua, who is well into his 20s, this is not a 19 year old, right? That Olympic gold medals from 2012. Right? Anthony Joshua is simply at this stage of his career not going to learn how to move like Tyson Fury can. He certainly is not going to learn how to fight left-handed like Tyson Fury does. He's not going to learn Tyson Fury's feints. Folks, Vladimir Klitschko didn't have an off night against Tyson Fury. Vladimir Klitschko couldn't read the feints. He's frozen because Tyson Fury is throwing feints. Right? So understand, if we're just looking at the ceilings of fighters at heavyweight, right? The ceilings. And I know what I'm going to say next is going to be controversial. I'll let the chips fall where they may. The two guys at heavyweight with the highest ceilings are Tyson Fury and Joseph Parker. Right? I know, I know, trust me, I know, officially, Anthony Joshua beat Joseph Parker, right? All I'm saying to you is, Parker has the faster hand speed. Parker is the better athlete, right? Parker, when he wants, can get low. Anthony Joshua really can't. He's a big man who moves like a big man. 
So what Vladimir Klitschko, in my opinion, and I understand, Vladimir Klitschko sparred with a bunch of guys, and uh, Vladimir Klitschko's a Hall of Famer, no question, multi-year heavyweight champion, right, who actually fought some guys, right? Um, you know, has a win over Alexander Povetkin, and I think Povetkin today is a serious threat to anyone with a heavyweight title. Right? Povetkin has one loss today. It's to Vladimir Klitschko. Right? People know I picked Klitschko to beat Anthony Joshua. I think very highly of Vladimir Klitschko. But he's wrong here. Right? Maybe Tyson Fury lacks discipline. Okay, fine. If you're betting on one event, if Tyson Fury fights Anthony Joshua, if you're betting on one event, and if the guys have time to train, you have to entertain the thought that both guys bring their A game into the ring. Right? You have to think that that could happen. And if they do, and Tyson Fury's 29 years old, folks. He's not 39. Right? In other words, there is the possibility that Tyson Fury gets back in shape and is Tyson Fury. Right? If both Joshua and Fury bring their A games into the ring, I'll take my chances. I'll pick Tyson Fury. Understand, that jab that Anthony Joshua was flashing against Joseph Parker, right? By the way, let me just say, Parker's jab is effective. The guys are throwing the jabs for different reasons. Parker takes Joshua's right hand right off his shoulder. You don't even hear about it in a fight. Well, just understand, Joshua's jab, which he can only throw with his left hand, right? By the way, that's the only punch he was landing with any effectiveness against Joseph Parker. <clears throat> you don't believe me? Just look at the copy box numbers, right? If Fury decides to fight Southpaw, I don't even think Joshua lands that jab. Right? Just, just, uh, you know, just think it through. Right? Tyson Fury, you know, Tyson Fury might have emotional issues. Right? I suspect he does. He might get a little bit too high during the good times and a little bit too low during the bad times. He might have emotional issues. He might have things going on. Right? But folks, don't confuse that for a moment with a lack of talent. Please don't. Right? Let me just say, too, the Joseph Parker fight, a fight where Parker's never hurt, becomes the first man to go the distance with Anthony Joshua, and the Joshua people are out celebrating as if their guy gave a dominant performance. Right? Um... No one's talking about the ridiculously wide scores that really discredit the outcome of a fight. But, but just understand, I believe even the Josh, well, hell, the person doing CompuBox figured out that Joseph Parker landed more power punches in the fight. Right? I'm just telling you that Anthony Joshua is never going to have Joseph Parker's hand speed. But he's just never going to have Joseph Parker's hand speed. Right? And I'm just telling you that Parker, and I understand, Parker played it conservatively. Parker was not on his A game when he fought Anthony Joshua. But I'm just telling you, Parker can move better than Anthony Joshua. You don't have to believe me. You can just look at the films. Right? So... All I'm saying is, I hope 
when casinos come up with betting lines for a Joshua Fury fight down the road. I hope they remember the commentary of Vladimir Klitschko. I believe Klitschko called Tyson Fury a fart. Right, well, let's remember Klitschko lost to that fart. Right, let's remember the same lack of discipline that Klitschko is bemoaning beat him. And this was at a time when Klitschko didn't have the long layoff that he had, the more than a year layoff that he had before the Joshua fight. Right? Think it through. Tyson Fury is never in trouble. Never. The guy Klitschko is calling undisciplined. He's never in trouble against Vladimir Klitschko. So to sum up, Let's just hope the casinos buy into this Klitschko thesis that Anthony Joshua's discipline, and Joshua's discipline, right? Anthony Joshua's discipline is going to carry the day over Tyson Fury. Folks, just like in my life, I've listened to many musicians who I knew had problems Right? Ike Turner. Michael Jackson. Right? Prince. I mean, I've, I've listened to many mu DMX. Right? Snoop Dogg. Eminem. Dr. Dre. Right? I've listened to many musicians who I understood had some challenges in the rest of their lives. Right? Just like I'll go to a movie theater and I'll look at a Robert Downey Jr. movie. Folks, <laughs> young kids need to look up who Robert Downey Jr. was in the 1980s. Right? Talk to his ex-girlfriend, Sarah Jessica Parker. Right? You have some people who, you know, today, they're holding it together. Right? But we need to understand that in real life, people face challenges, right? That some of the best in their craft, Jimi Hendrix, right? Some of the people who really are the best in their craft have had moments where, you know, the pieces didn't quite fit together in the rest of their lives, right? If you're a Nick fan and you recall Michael Ray Richardson, I'm not sure if I've seen five guys on a basketball court better than him. But he had issues. Now, Tyson Fury has had the rematch of the Klitschko fight canceled. Um, he's had some emotional challenges and stuff like that. Right? Simply put, to sum up this video, his A game beats Anthony Joshua's A game. I don't even think there's anything Joshua can do about it. Joshua's not going to learn a jab with his right hand. He's not going to have the footwork to switch from righty to lefty. Come on now. Right? Understand. <sighs> Let's just say this. You can buy into the lack of discipline narrative. Right? Let's hope the casinos do. And you can go with the status quo. But in terms of pure talent, uh, and I'm a fan of, of the Klitschko's, right? But in, in terms of pure talent, you really have to go back several years to find a guy who's flirting with the kind of talent that Tyson Fury brings in the ring on his A game. Think about it. Vladimir Klitschko had not lost for years, right? As I said, he, he beat Alexander Povetkin, who, you know, is somebody's mandatory right now. This is a guy who had not lost for years. Folks, he didn't come close. Didn't come close to hurting Tyson Fury. Longtime viewers here online know I picked Fury before that fight took place. I'm telling you, Fury's talent level is rare. When you're looking at boxers who can switch, when you're looking at a big man, right? Fury's bigger 
than Joshua. And when small Derek Jezura gets inside on Tyson Fury, and Tyson Fury, tall man, decides to out-muscle Derek Chisora on the inside and is able to do so, and you realize that this guy, who can jab with both hands, has an advanced inside game, right? I'm just saying that's a different level than Joshua and Wilder, right? The only question with Tyson Fury is whether he can get back to his A game. Understand, he's still in his 20s. How many years did Ali leave the ring for after the whole Vietnam mess? Before he comes back, becomes heavyweight champ again in the 1970s and has more title defenses in the 70s than he does in the 60s. Right? This is the heavyweight division. This is not the lightweight division. Guys are a little bit older at heavyweight, aren't they? Povetkin is still a major threat, folks. He's in his 30s. Right? He's in his 30s. Right? Luis Ortiz almost beat Wilder. He's in his 30s. Wilder's in his 30s. This is heavyweight. The guys age a little bit more slowly. If Tyson Fury gets it back together, he's not a fart in the wind as... Klitschko claim. No, he's the guy who beat Klitschko. Right? He's he's a guy. He's a guy who, as I make this video, is unbeaten, folks. Right? So let me just thank Vladimir Klitschko. I hope the line is lopsided. Right? I'll be the guy the first day a Joshua Fury fight is announced, who shows up at the casino and tries to put money straight up on Tyson Fury, right? I'll hedge it with Joshua by KO. By the way, that's the only chance Joshua has of beating Fury on his A-game, by KO, right? He has no shot of outboxing Tyson Fury, nor would Deontay Wilder. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video, let it rip. Thanks for stopping by.